send it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I felt bad. Yeah. 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 Well, Amanda was asking me. I was like, well, I think you should probably just text Kane. Yeah, she should take it up with paper. Weird life. Well, and the projector hates Kane. He's trying to give a presentation. Every time he touches it, it like goes off. The meeting will come to order. First item is approval of the agenda. I will move that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion passes. The Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Sunshine. You come to a meeting, you get a job. Can you please lead us in the club? <laughs> oh, no, we all do it with you. <laughs> Thanks for being here tonight. Um, just a few things that I wanted to share is we have um, we had our leadership uh, tour that we did last week, and yes, okay. I'm, these days I, I fly by. <laughs> uh, so we did last week. It was it was really nice. I believe it was the sixth leadership group to come through. We had two alumni in the group, one from '98 and one from 2019, and. Uh, they're, they're doing, I believe they're thinking about doing their project on uh, mental health uh, situations and awareness and services and things like that. And uh, so they got to meet Frank first and kind of see him in a little bit in action, talk to some of the kids about the interaction with him. Uh, we took tours of all the sites. They spoke to third graders, eighth graders, and 11th and 12th graders at each site. And it was, it was very good. The kids had some really nice things to say, and they did a nice job of um, answering questions to a large group. Uh, we took questions and answers here for a while, and uh, some great things that came out of it is they want to uh, try to set up a job fair for our high school kids to uh, bring in businesses to a location like this and let our kids be able to see what opportunities are available in town. Um, also, we talked about internshiping in town, uh, which is another uh, exciting idea. So it was really good. Uh, we also are working on setting up in, when is our realtor? Oh, December 2nd. December 2nd, we're going to be doing a realtor tour of all three, hopefully all three sites. Uh, similar to the leadership tour, we're bringing realtors, let them see the things that we're doing, uh, our vision, what we've accomplished, what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, so we're working with uh, local realtors on that. It'll be exciting. Uh, on a marketing update, we received all of our U.S. News and World Report banners. And we're going to put uh, the high school for the last four cycles has been a nationally and uh, ranked and best high school in America. So those uh, banners are going to be put up on the outside of the building facing Palisades. So when you drive by, you'll be able to see those. The other four will be in the Hall of Champions in the gym, along with uh, some other um, upcoming uh, A-plus School of Excellence uh, letter grade stuff that's going to be going up as well. Uh, also working with the town on some marketing options. I have uh, Grady Miller coming in next week. And uh, once the new town council is in, I'll be meeting with them individually as well. So uh, Make a Difference Day was on Saturday, and it went really well. Uh, we had a lot of community members on our campus. They focused primarily on the garden, the, the old garden that we used with our uh, special ed self-contained had taken care of. Uh, it was in pretty bad shape, and within a couple hours, it looks like new. It looks beautiful. PTO is going to uh, put some money into that and help uh, kind of build it up even more. The Falcon's Nest and other areas throughout uh, the campus were updated, and it just looks really nice. So it was really great to have so many people out helping. We have lots of students there as well uh, from various sports and clubs, um, definitely making a difference. And then uh, we'll have our uh, ribbon cutting ceremony by the Chamber of Commerce. So the CEO is going to come out, uh, Betsy, to uh, do the 
uh, ribbon cutting for the PBIS store at the middle school once it's ready to open, just like we do a business in town uh, to make sure that um, you know, they can show the kids they're very excited about um, the upcoming uh, store. So with that, uh, I, I sent a survey out today to high school parents, um, just asking them for feedback on things that are important to our community as we strategic plan and as we look at what we're trying to accomplish. Uh, parent feedback is so important, so that, that's going out for the first time today. It's a series of about 15 questions about what is, what is important when we look at scheduling our classes and our overall uh, schedule of our day, what, what is important to parents so that we can maybe be a little more innovative in our approach and uh, find a way to give teachers more time in their day, teach, uh, students more options in their day, but at the same time still meet our instructional minutes, but maybe be a little more creative and innovative in our style. So we'll get parent feedback, teacher feedback, and then student advisory board feedback as well. And then we'll put some together and uh, bring it to you guys for some discussion. So with that, I conclude my comments. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Moving on to governing board reports, we'll start with you, Dr. Berner. Um, okay. Maybe some list this time. Um, yes, Make a Difference Day. I loved seeing all the pictures, and so many groups helped. Um, it was so nice to see them um, at the high school doing some landscaping, um, which Jill and I, I know, appreciate. <laughs> we do. Um, and all of our students who helped. Um, I don't know if everyone in our community realizes that students need 24 hours of community service as part of their graduation requirements. So. In addition to doing things on Make a Difference Day, they volunteer throughout our community um, their whole four years. Um, and at senior night, I mean, there's kids who are graduating with 200 plus hours of community service. So it's really nice to see. Um, tomorrow night is senior night for football and palm and swim and cross country. Uh, I think that's it. Is that it? Um, so that should be lots of fun. I know they're putting a lot of work into that. Um, and then it was really nice to see Red Ribbon Day came back to the middle school. Um, and I saw that on Facebook, which I don't know. I've been going on Facebook too much. But it was nice to see. Um, uh, it was nice to see the school updates in the Red Ribbon Day. Um, and as always, our Fountain Hills Coalition just is such a great partner to our school districts. And we appreciate them. Um, <clears throat> I was gone for most of the last couple of weeks, so, um, but I did attend uh, Coffee with Kane this morning. It was a nice turnout again. Um, table's always full, and uh, Kane shared his survey with us that he is sending out, and there was a lot of good parent feedback and, and discussion about that. So, you know, it's good to, to see parents getting engaged, and um, uh, even um, one of the mentors. Is that mm -hmm. a golden eagle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Her and her husband were there, um, which came found out they had teaching certificates. So yeah, I have to recruit yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it was nice to see that they came as well because, along with parents, I always like to hear community feedback. Mm -hmm. So um, it was good. So, yeah, that's about all I've done. Um, I didn't do a whole lot other than help contribute to one of our agenda items tonight. That was mostly what I've done for the last couple That was a big help. That was <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, moving on to an update from FHEA. Mr. Buckley, come on up. I just noticed. This is the next meeting, new exercise. Oh, that's wow. what I was wondering. Oh, yeah. Yes. Are they wireless? They are wireless. Ooh. Yeah, so I won't trip anymore. <laughs> 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 so, uh, once again, thanks for having me. Uh, our so for this report, um, I we can.
continued our survey, our quarterly survey. Um, so this survey that we're going to report on today, um, it was given to teachers from last Wednesday until today. Okay. So we closed it this morning, had it open for a week. Um, I think it has some, it's a mixed bag, but it gives us some stuff to look at. So that's great. Um, also, while I'm going through this, I know we also provided with the, uh, you with the written responses. I, I um, think I forgot. Oh, okay, so we <laughs> so have I'm those. I'm going to send them right now. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Um, and so yeah, it's a, it's a mixed bag. Uh, one thing that I was very excited about, uh, it's the highest response rate of any survey that we've had uh, since I've been uh, with FHA in general. 69 employees responded. So of our certified uh, staff, that is 82.3%. And then we had a 19% for classified uh, employees. So classified is an area that we're trying to represent more uh, so we're, that's an area of growth for us. Uh, in previous years, uh, I don't, we weren't representing classified employees. Uh, and in order to try to increase that response, we're going to try some different things. For example, um, a lot of our classified employees don't have laptops. Mm -hmm. And so it's not as an integral part of the day as it is for our certified. So we're looking at different ways to reach them um, so that we can always incorporate those things. Yeah. How many employees do we have total? Uh, with certified and classified, the last report that FHA had had, we had 68 of each, so about 136. Mm, okay. So, and we usually have a response rate around about 53 um, employees. So that's what meet and confer was last year. So what was big for me was that this was a uh, a larger response rate than meet and confer, because which tells me that meet and confer we're going to have a you know when we do that in the spring. Or we'll do that in January. I think that's going to have a really good response. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, and then, so we continue to the same uh, same questions as we have been asking. That way, we give ourselves some data to go with. Yeah. So, uh, feeling valued and respected as a professional by site administration, we had a positive rating of seventy four percent, which is down from our August. But we had discussed in August that that was probably. We're brand new um, into the school year. It is still uh, 14 points higher than our rating in January. Uh, it has less neutral with 15% uh, as compared to January of last year. And negative came in at 11% right in the middle um, of where we were, where we were there. TJ, do you have that? I not that I'm asking that you share that publicly, but do you have it broken down by site or that something yes. you can share with Kane so that yeah, there, there's, there's an idea of where those employees, like what site is feeling less valued? If it yes. is a particular and, right. uh, okay. one of the advantages of um, me being instructional coach is now that I'm working on at the three different sites, I've actually had the opportunity to share each site's feedback with their administration. And so every principal has already, I've already had a meeting with them and discussed this with them. We even went through the comments um, for some of them. And so uh, now that was more helpful at like an elementary site because we had a lot more written responses. Mm -hmm. um, like at the high school, there wasn't as many written responses. So we covered more of the general. Um, but so that was, we think very, yeah, we think that was a, a new component to add in there. Okay. And then uh, feeling valued and respected as a uh, professional by district administration, that's at a 72%. So it tracks uh, almost right with uh, our site administration. It is down from 87%. The bigger number that I noticed there was we have a negative of 12%. We have a negative of 0 to 4. Um, so just that, you know, okay, that's, that's there. Um, and then in January, of course, we were at a positive rating of 42 neutral of a 17, but our negative um, was all the way up to 41. So still tracking better than that. And I think whenever I look at these surveys, I definitely put more into that January number yeah. um, as far as the uh, kind of actions that I think we would, we would be taking. Can I, it's, do you just give them an opportunity for those three responses or is it a? Um, it's broken into, I believe this one's broken into, no, this one's, yeah, this one's three. It's just three positive, but three neutral or negative. Yeah. Uh, and then 
for a uh, personal level uh, of morale or job satisfaction. We're at 62% uh, with a positive. Now this one, I do believe there were like a highly, there's like a highly and then a, a regular one. But okay, gotcha. So when you combine maybe, those two categories. Then it's in, positive, yeah. Yeah, so there is that clear break. Uh, that's, yeah, 62% positive, um, same trends. So you can notice that all of this data is, is trending right where, right where we would expect it, slightly lower than August, higher than January. Um, and then this was the area that I noticed really this morning as I was, as I was putting this together. Um, this is our school levels morale or job satisfaction. So if we break it down by um, site and then have employees kind of where, so I think of this one as like your school environment. Yeah. You know, your environment, your culture. Uh, we had a, a positive rating of 42%, which is lower than August and January. It's a full 11% below January. Uh, so anytime that we're below that January rating, um, I think that's obviously an area of concern. Yeah, and, and I would say October, I know um, in terms of giving surveys to teachers, October's a really, really tough month because the research shows that October is when teachers have the lowest morale across the board. They just got done with parent-teacher conferences. So I think one of the things that I'd be interested in too, I'm not saying to do this, is this school level of morale or job satisfaction. Is this with the group within the school, or does this include student behavior and parents and all these other right. external factors that could that we cannot, well, student behavior we can, but we can't control how parents are, are interacting with teachers. Right. Um, so I would just, yeah, I, it's a little snapshot. I, it's concerning, um, but uh, that would be a question that would be interesting to dig into. And uh, with this, I did make sure we gave it after break. I did not want to give it right before break, as all of because I was like, if we get this right before break, that, that would be kind of scary. Just because that, that's always, you know, yeah. everybody wants ready for the break. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then a new question. So instead of asking the professional development question that we asked in August, uh, we went with, at this point in the year, how likely are you to return for 20? Uh, it, we kind of debated whether this was early, um, but at the same time, we thought given recent years and turnover that it's never too early to start to be able to combat that and make sure that we're providing the best uh, work environment and just overall work experience that we can. Uh, and so highly likely to return at 44%, likely 36%, uh, unlikely is 16%, and then highly unlikely is 4%. The way I would read this is if I see something, if I see somebody's highly unlikely to come back in October, that's probably pretty a good indicator they're not coming back. Yeah. Uh, unlikely and likely, I see that as you're obviously that's you're on the fence. Uh, and generally, I would say I believe these numbers would grow, um, but they would also grow in an environment when you didn't necessarily ask the question and react and respond to them. And these include our teachers and classified staff. So yeah, this would be one that we, I mean, the numbers are small, so I think, but this is something that maybe break it down and talk to Dr. J about. Because we, for this, I think we're, we need to be focused. I mean, obviously we don't want classified staff to leave either, but for this, I, I don't think it needs to be presented in a, a meeting like this, but um, teachers and where they are, just to, for some planning. And for, um, just for some added context on the site level meetings, uh, each administration was presented with how many of their employee group, um, and then we tried to zero in on that. One thing I know, uh, Dr. J, as soon as I saw this number and broke it down by um, employee group, pretty early, I would say I did that about Thursday or Friday of last week, because we got most of our responses with and so we know that an area of growth is uh, for employees with multiple, at multiple, at multiple schools, multiple sites. And so that is already an area that district administration is looking into. 
uh, to make sure that we are, um, like I said, being responsive to this and caring for our, our And students. not totally to put rose-colored glasses on, but eight out of 10 people that are saying that they're gonna stay in a job, I mean, that actually, given our current circumstances, is actually not bad. Oh yeah, we talked about it at being convert, and then Kane was like, well, you know, or Dr. J was like, well, the average is 50%, <laughs> yeah. so we're winning. Yeah. Um, and, and so we'll hope to keep that low, um, and, and I think we have a good um, grasp of that, whereas I think in previous years, we didn't have a, as good of a grasp of that. So. Uh, and then we asked, what are the two most determining factors of your employment decision for next year? Uh, pay, so there's two options, mm -hmm. so it's not just like one, of course. Uh, so pay was 67% responded uh, pay. Respect as a professional was 33%. Workload 26, and I don't have to read all those because I can read. Is, um, is there a, um, the respect as a professional, is there a, is the question longer than that? Because I'm, cur I'm just curious, I know through um, earlier questions they were asked if they felt like they were respected by their site administration and things like that. Um, so is respect as a professional just a general, do you feel respected as a professional? Or is it broken down, like do you feel respected by your peers, by your supervisor, by essentially your customers who would be parents and children? Because I think that would help us understand where we as a district need to go. Like if they're mm -hmm. not feeling respected as a professional, where do they feel the source of that is coming from? Right, and so it was, uh, it was presented as a general option. Uh, we did break things down with student interactions and colleague interactions. Uh, student interactions being at 23%, that uh, there, there was a, uh, one, it was kind of high, and then two, it was on the negative, it was more on the negative side. Yeah. Because we have had a lot of issues with student behavior. Yeah, and I see from, in skimming the, the comments, um, which you said, and we can tell by, um, you know, the nature of some of the comments that they are, uh, many of them from the elementary school, and the, the biggest things are behavior and then facilities at yeah. that location. Yeah, that's I, like I'm on page almost I'm on page two, and mm -hmm. and literally it's McDowell, you know, McDowell's facilities, their sanitary cleanliness repairs, and then the, you know the, the student behavior. Yeah, um, the emotional support needs that, right. that special our ed. littles need and special ed. And, yeah. and I will say, knowing teachers in other districts particularly like kindergarten, first grade, they've never seen anything yeah. like Yeah, I mean, one of, because one of kids the ones. Can't, kids with COVID, I mean, they weren't, a lot of them weren't in preschool. They can't even sit still. They can't even do circle yeah. time. So how are you supposed to teach them On the last songs? page, it says, the behavior is the worst I have seen in 20 yeah. years of yeah. education for yeah. the littles with Thanks. the kids coming in because they just haven't, mm -hmm. because of COVID, they didn't get what they needed to be prepared to then sit in a classroom. Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard for the teacher to, as one of them pointed out, be um, a teacher, a disciplinarian, emotional support. Yeah, no, and, and teachers of littles are all those things, and I, I want to emphasize that, you know, academics are clearly important, but we have to provide kids you can't get social, emotional academics. learning yes, so that they right, learn how to function as a yeah. citizen in a classroom, because that's ultimately what they are doing, mm -hmm. you know, collaboration, communication, all of those great skills. So I feel for these teachers of littles, I really do. And Well, know. that's this one comment says, the students coming into our lower grades are not the same students who came in five to 10 years ago. Many littles are angry and frustrated and seeking any adult detention. We also need better housekeeping at McDowell Mountain, putting paper towels over vomit, pee on the carpet is not cleaning, sanitizing. We are a great district and our small size is a blessing and a curse. So those are things <clears throat> that, you know, that shouldn't be happening. So um, we need to make sure we're, we're doing a better job. Dr. Jack, Dr. J and I have talked about this multiple times that um, McDowell Mountain, if, if we're not gonna move forward with moving them over to the middle school, needs an intense overall. So this is not okay for student, for teachers or, and our students to be there. Um, you know, and back to your respect as a professional, I think that's, unfortunately, it's kind of across the board right now with teachers that, you know, 
Dr. Jay mentioned this morning that there were 2,500 open positions for teachers and 1,400 counseling positions across the state of Arizona. So unfortunately, when you have to go to work in an environment where you're not paid well, you're, you're not valued by those in the community, you're treated poorly by students and parents, and there's the possibility of fearing for your safety, it's not so great to be a teacher right now. So, it, you know, it's very disappointing that this is the, the environment that our teachers are in. Mm -hmm. It's very sad. And right. that's not just here, that's, that's everywhere right now. But that best. isn't an excuse. It's not. We still we still need to recognize right. that we need to do better. Absolutely. Well, I think a hard part that it puts for us in, in specifically Fountain Hills is where I know at least at one point, at least last year, like sixty percent of our staff lived in town. So that means forty percent travel to get here. Right. And most of those forty percent aren't living like you know, at Villalinda and Shea, and it's a short drive. Like, right. that's 40% that are putting in a decent amount of gas mileage to get here. And when we are witnessing a lot of the, if, if it's the same everywhere, then you're gonna turn those 40 over yes. pretty regularly. And yes. I think that's a lot of what we've seen. Because most of the people that have been here, like staying, it's, it's really the same 60%. It's the other 40% moving and trying to, you know, trying to commute and, and do all those things. So that's one area that, yeah, like, definitely we want to make sure that we, and we were, you know, we've talked to the district, district uh, administration's talking about um, uh, the innovative ways that we can kind of combat some of this stuff, but um, just wanted to make sure we got that snapshot. And then on uh, meet and confer, uh, we are working on uh, negotiating the uh, additional funds that we got from the state and so we have as an employee group we have uh, discussed it we've come up with a proposal and so we're at this point uh, kind of we're, we're weighing class size and pay um, which I believe we have a pretty clear response to from our employees um, when I see a 67 percent for pay and nine percent for class size uh, but we're going to continue to, to check with them um, on that, uh, just as far as how numbers look moving forward. Um, but we are we are trying to get that uh, extra money allocated for our teachers and our staff, um, because I believe that with 67% same pay, if we can show that good faith effort, I know uh, Mesa allocated this money in late, after, late August, or early September. I know Scottsdale did it in September, so we want to make sure that we do that. Um, now, granted, we know we don't have a finance person who's been over that. Um, we know there's a struggle there, but we want to make sure that we have something uh, before the end of the um, calendar year, so before the end of the semester, so that our employees have kind of that boost going over, at least going into August. And I think Dr. Jay's working on that. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's, but again, if you look at all the data, and this is part of why, and this, my survey today out to parent has nothing to do with this. It's been something I've been thinking about since, you know, since last year when I when I was you know, hired. Is that when I sat through a lot of the uh, K twelve network of teacher mentoring and teacher. Um, you know, it's really about the induction of new teachers in your district, how to keep them. And, and I went through that last year for the last two years. And the, the number of, of people who are retiring early, um, who are expecting to not return is very high. Right. And, and we do have a lot of work to do. There's no doubt about that. But I still believe that there's, there's a balance between pay and working conditions. And so that's, that's what this is an attempt to start, is asking our, our community, our students, all those, you know, all those stakeholders involved is, how do we make our, your experience better here so that you feel you're more supported, you have, um, you know, you have, you have more time. Time has become very valuable. And so that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. And we have some, some ideas of how we can do that that I think will raise overall morale of, of, our, of our staff um, once we can get 
that finalized and hopefully into place. And then, um, you know, all the questions about McDowell Mount, that's, that's one of the reasons we're discussing the K-5 move to the, to the middle school is to, is to have that environment that is a great environment for pre-K through five. So families have six years in the district before they have to make a decision of what they want to do. And, uh, and, and the hope is by then that there is no other option, that they love it here and they want to stay. So, so it all factors in, it's all interconnected. And um, so it's good feedback, it's good data for us. And um, we take, I mean, that's all we do is ask for feedback. That's yeah, right. all, all we do is ask for feedback so we can get better. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Did you have a final slide? I did, but we covered it. Oh, okay. <laughs> have, have we we feel that I'm free to ask questions anytime. Yeah. So. Right. Would well, you this like was us to be where I went over the, and then I didn't print it out, but I liked it that, and you got to read the big ones. Yeah. <laughs> so that I was, appreciate I think the that comments. worked out really well. Mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate those. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We move on to reports, and we have some district celebrations. Yes. Okay. All right. First off, we have our. Oh. Can you come over here, though? Yeah. So that it's <laughs> in the, the camera? <laughs> <laughs> we have our employee spotlight. Uh, Angie, come on down, Angie. Awesome job. Let's give it up. <laughs> so, Angie was selected. Uh, we, we, have, we have a lot of fun up at the district office, but we also have times where it's a little tough. And um, one of the things I think that has separated her a little bit in the last, um, in, in the last month has been our uh, Remind app. We've been working really hard to get Remind up and running. And what we found is that there's three companies trying to work together. So there's PowerSchool, there's Clever, and then there's Remind, and they all work together to, to get things done. Well, at one point, uh, it was reported there were 9,700 errors in the communication between the three. And so Angie here has been spending a lot of time going through a lot of them one by one, fixing them. And uh, we are almost through the finish line with Remind, which will be very nice because it's a much easier way, I think, to, to, to communicate. But she works hard through PowerSchool. She's our PowerSchool. Uh, genius. Um, how many times have you fixed my password? <laughs> I don't know. We're not <laughs> well, apparently Zoom needs it. Yeah. Hi, Zoom. So, um, so I've got locked out a few times, but she's she's always there to help, and uh, she just does an awesome job. And we were we had um, last uh, last Friday. I, I did I, I cooked for them and brought in lunch and. We were talking about this uh, this event, and I told her, you know, the the bonus is you get to stay late for a board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, congratulations, Thank you for awesome job, Thank you. Angie Brooks. Thank you. Thank you. Jeffrey Nix. Oh, oh no. he wasn't able to make it this year. Yeah. Okay. So well, we, we will wait? recognize him. No, no, because he, he no, we're not. Okay, so we were we were uh, recognizing Jeffrey for his retirement and for all the years of service to uh, Fountain Hills. Ten years as a bus driver. As a bus driver, uh, we love our bus drivers and. We're one of the few uh, districts I know of that's fully staffed in bus drivers, <laughs> so we want to keep it that way. But um, anytime you put in a decade in, a, in, a, in an organization, we want to make sure they feel um, that we appreciate all that. So we'll reach out and have him stop by, and I'll be able to, yep. to have to his apple and his pen and express and my all. gratitude. Yep. So let's give it up for Jeffrey. <laughs>
on to information and discussion items, starting with the student trip to England. All right. Well, I, I have some people here to speak on that, so I'm going to call up uh, Jamie and Luke to speak on behalf of the, the proposal. <laughs> Um, we'd like to propose a trip for next fall break, um, going to England and Scotland. Um, we know the fall break isn't locked in stone, but we can still be really flexible on that. Um, we had a really successful Greece trip this past year, and we have a lot of interest in kids signed up for this year's Italy trip for the summer. So um, it would be eighth grade through twelfth grade. Um, and only Fountain Hills kids would be allowed to sign up for the trip, as we know them. Um, do you want to go over a little bit of the itinerary? Just a little couple bonus points. Well, sorry. <laughs> looking at uh, some of where we're going to go, we go to Scotland and go to Edinburgh. And uh, from a literary standpoint, we're looking at places that inspired people like Robert Louis Stevenson, um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And uh, J.K. Rowling, and it's just to name a few. Um, we're going to travel down to see some things like the Spectres of Scotland to kind of see like a different variety of what's out there. Um, going out to Warwick Castle, we're going to go to Stratford upon Avon. Again, literary standpoint here, where Shakespeare was born. Um, go see his wife's cottage where she lived. Um, I do believe we're also going to be seeing a little bit of a theater performance out when we get to London. Um, which the center of all theatrical performances. I mean, you can say you go to New York and go to Broadway, but realistically, London is where you go for this. So from a literary perspective, we're going to be seeing a lot of these things. Um, London being also this big city, we're going to be seeing a lot of the major tour sites, uh, Big Ben, Parliament, possibly getting lucky enough to see a changing of the guard, um, depending on the time we get there. Um, and then, of course, we'll go to the end. We get to go see uh, Stonehenge, which, again, I mean, a wonder of the world, essentially. And uh, that's what we're looking at as far as some of the big name, big picture items out here. On the proposal, I put um, 11 days going to Paris, but we cut that out. Okay. It'll just be nine days. It makes it, it makes the trip cheaper. So um, the total listed here is 38.50. Has that changed as well? Uh, it, it'll be right under 38, okay. and if they sign up within a certain time, you get a $200 uh, like discount. Like an early bird discount. Yeah. yeah. Why did you take Paris out? Just because we wanted to keep it within the fall break, Okay. and then we can offer that in the future sometime. Mm -hmm. And then the female chaperone says to be determined, is that going to be a school teacher in our district or an outside parent? Um, still to be determined. You know how I feel about these trips. I would <laughs> suggest bringing this to the board in January. No, I'm serious. I don't. I, know I don't. What you're saying. I, I think saying. that the trips are awesome. I just don't think, as a school district, we should be in the business of sending kids over fall break. All, you know, I just don't think we should be in the business of setting these trips up. And I just think it's we're lucky we haven't had a lawsuit. And I think it's great that you all do it. I just think it should go through the town go through something else I just um, I'm, I'm a worrier that way I just don't think and the tax credits I, I just I know then what I, you know 400 especially happen. when when our district is in such financial straits that we're using $400 that could be used toward something else for kids to go to Europe I just have a tough time with that but I trust you guys I believe that it would be a great trip I just don't think in the business of sponsoring out-of-country trips. So, that's it. No questions for me. I will comment that I appreciate that it's been, um, it's 8 through 12. Um, right. and, and, and only found the house. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate that you guys have listened to, to comments that we've made. Um, and that, you know, when when we have concerns that we're trying to meet you guys to at a certain point, I, I appreciate that 
you've listened to that and come back and said, you know, it'll only be kids going into high school that we won't take sixth and seventh graders. So, you know, we, you know, Dr. Barnard has valid points that, we, you know, you never know what's going to happen. My kids have gone on the trips. I appreciate the experience that they've had. So I'm kind of, you know, I, I get both perspectives, but I do appreciate that there's been some, um, you know, some negotiation there and, and that you've listened to what we've said. So. Thank you. All right, thank you. And next we have information about the AVID elective. All right, Madam President, members of the board and guests. Um, so one of our, our goals is to bring AVID to the middle school as a feeder program for the high school. Uh, a little history for people who don't know. Um, the uh, Johnson Family Foundation uh, brought, brought AVID in. The Burn Johnson uh, Family Foundation brought it in. Uh, about 2017 for the 2017-2018 school year and uh, the reason there was support from from the family foundation was it met their their um, their vision of, of kind of the voice for the voiceless and so what happens a lot of times with students is that um, sometimes high achieving or really students with high potential um, maybe they just aren't no one sees it in them yet and so it takes sometimes a little bit of an extra push or someone to be looking for uh, you know, those characteristics in a student to, to get them to think beyond maybe what they're capable of. And so AVID really has allowed for that throughout nationwide for students without um, maybe first generation uh, college bound student, maybe someone who's never thought about taking honors or AP classes, but now they're considering it. And um, so we've had, you know, we, we've, We've been through uh, about five years now of AVID. We also, in that time, had a major disruption for two of those years, but with, with COVID and, and, and the way things went. But we're, we're rebuilding it. I feel like the vibe at the high school this year is very good. Um, I've had a lot of parents share with me that, that without AVID, they're, they're, they feel like they're soon really be struggling. It's been a really good uh, environment for them. We have two great teachers in there who are, one is an AVID, former AVID student, the other is alumni from, from our school district, and they're growing it. We set goals this year uh, that we finalized earlier, and, and, and they're off and running with those. And one of their main goals this year is an attention to focus note taking across the, the whole site, a school wide goal, and then um, building the, the program from uh, the recruiting standpoint. And so, what I look at is there's a perfect fit right now in the schedule at the middle school with academic strategies where, you know, there, there's some unstructured time there. And I think Dr. Wheeldryer is trying to figure out, you know, how do you best utilize that? And so my thought was with AVID being uh, at the school wide level at the middle school, it could be an academic strategies uh, kind of anchor. So for example, AVID teaches the, the wicker strategy of writing, inquiry, uh, communication, organization, and reading, you could work on one of those each day of the week and have it be on Monday is writing, and it could be creative writing, it could be writing a letter to you know, someone famous that you, you, you want to connect with. I mean, there's a million things, writing your favorite football team, and there's things you could do at the middle school level to make the writing part fun, and then you spend a day on communication, a day on reading, um, but also still get some of those other things that we've come to like about academic strategies, for example, getting some homework done, getting some additional assistance, uh, additional help from your teacher. So I think it would just provide a little bit more, um, just a little bit more guidance to, to teachers on what to do with that period of time. And then uh, maybe in year two, it would develop into an actual AVID elective for eighth graders, where they could take that as an elective class, and then that moves it, then they move up with that group to ninth grade and on through, through high school, and maybe it grows to seventh grade and sixth grade. So right now my conversation with AVID as an organization has been a school-wide focus through academic strategies for the first year at the middle school and, and then going through. So that's, that's basically what we're trying to accomplish for, for next year. And if the time comes and the middle school were to move over to the high school campus, it makes it a little bit easier to share that AVID teacher because they would be on the same Questions? I 
love Abbott. Um, I, and I will say when my kids first got to the middle school and I saw academic strategies, I thought that it was like a class where they Structure, learned right. academic strategies yeah. rather than a study hall, which is fine, but um, I think it, it makes perfect sense. I, um, it's been amazing for my kids um, that have done it, and my older son said he would have done it had he realized everything that it was. Um, you know, I, uh, I think it's good for all kids. Um, that's my only, you know, I think we sell it as, you know, I'm just first generation too, right? Like, and, um, but I think we should sell it. We should encourage all of our kids to take it because yeah, it's right. career and college readiness. They help you with planning things if you're going to go right into the workforce or the military or college. I just think, um, not just. It is such a valuable system that our kids can have access to, and I would recommend, you know, even if, you know, once a month or once every week, all of our kids got to experience, like, how to take notes correctly and how to, you know, study, study, you know, collaboratively, skills that they'll be able to use their whole life. So I think the program is amazing, um, and it certainly has changed some kids' lives that struggled in eighth grade, came to the high school, and I know they're thriving in Abbott, so. I agree. Um, I, I would like to see more kids take it, not just, you know, a limited few. And, and I understand the premise behind it, you know, that it's to help those kids that may need, you know, further assistance and stuff. But, you know, my son comes from a family, you know, two parents with a sister who is older, went through the, you know, same grades he did you know, has family support, obviously as involved parent, and yet at, in college, like he's still, it, you know, there's still pieces that aren't fitting in his puzzle and stuff. And so I think, um, you know, looking back at class like this, even though he took honors and AP classes and had that parent support, still could have helped him in certain areas. So I think it would be a valuable, you know, class for all kids, not, I agree with you, not just, yeah. not just mm -hmm. a select few. Absolutely. And I, I like the idea of, yes, using the um, middle school academic strategies and providing more structure there. Um, I did want to ask because I think we've talked a couple times about um, reteach at the middle school and that potentially being done during academic strategies if we weren't going to do it like after school hours. Um, so just curious how like that would play out with, if so, Avid was done during sure. academic strategies. So in some of the scheduling ideas I have, um, I still believe strongly, you know, uh, it, with, with reteach that there has to be the student buy into it. And, yeah. and we did it differently in 2016 than most schools do by having it after school because there was some teeth of, of like, I gotta stay after now and I don't get to run to, you know, lunch of my friend, whatever they do yeah. after school, it was I had to stay. So I do think what we're looking at with our scheduling is to possibly be able to put into place where reteach can be uh, part of the day, but also could be uh, still be kind of a reward if you are on track and you don't need it. You may not need to stay for that additional period of time at the end of the day, um, which I've seen done with, with success as well. Uh, I really look at my, my forward vision looking into two years from now yeah. is that the sixth through eighth grade uh, resembles a lot of the, the good things that, that we have 912. And so reteach would be um, an after school thing for sixth through, through, through eighth grade, just like an after school club or a sport. We provide buses, we communicate with parents. Um, and, and so the AVID would be during the academic strategy, the reteach would be after school. But it, again, it could be also a reward based thing where it's part of the school day, but you might be able in middle school to do something different. Um, you might be able to, they're doing really good work with PBIS over there, so it could be that you get to do preferred activity time yeah. or other types of things during that 30 minutes while if you haven't done, and again, I, I always want to say reteach isn't, wasn't always for kids who struggle, and that it wasn't. If I got an 80 on my formatives, yeah, I could go back and get 100, right, yeah. and, and I'm a perfectionist, I want to get that done, or I just want to go because I just want to learn more, I want to get enriched a little bit further, I could so, so that that's that's the vision moving forward is that it would it would the, the two schools would be very aligned with the principles of what works and then they would be unique in the way that they're. Okay. Um, and I 
And then the, the uh, cost for professional development for the teachers, that, that comes out of our Title II money? Um, it could. There, there's a couple of options I'm okay. looking at for that. I mean, it's it's a little bit, it's, it's, it's less expensive to bring in than original cost. Mm -hmm. um, they do really push that you go to the summer institutes. It's not that expensive. Like, I'm looking at the prices, yeah, right. and I, I mean, it's not, and I, sure. I 100% um, encourage any time we bring something new to the district that we provide professional development. It's Absolutely. not fair for teachers, but... Um, yeah, I would just, I, I think that, um, especially if we can get creative about providing that and, you know, even giving teachers a little stipend to take time out of their summer to get um, to get this uh, certification. Yeah, we great. took three, I think three trips, bringing it into the high school, and, um, and, and it was, I mean, I, to this day, you know, I walk into certain teachers' rooms still, and they're still doing Cornell notes. <laughs> I mean, they, they're very regimented about it. Um, and th the hard thing is when you lose a teacher, you lose all that professional development. Right. And that's yeah. actually what I was going to ask you. Mm -hmm. Like, it's almost, you know, that is the tough part is, you know, you, you spend all this money to train a teacher to work within our district. And then because we've paid for all of their training, another district pilfers them. Right, which happens. That's why we gotta so. keep them. Yeah. Uh, number one. And then number two, but again, I really, like I said, I, I'm gonna bring some ideas back to, to this discussion and in, in probably, you know, the, maybe by the next meeting or the meeting after that. But um, I, I really think we have a, a good starting point of creating something pretty unique here for, for our, that benefits our parents, our students, and mm -hmm. our teachers. Um, if, if, you know, if we look at all the things that, that we're looking for as a community that are important to us, I think we can build that. And as part of that, hopefully that will, that will keep the retention rate where it is. And, and some of these trainings don't always have to be out of, out of state, and some are, but there are, the last ADL training I went to was in Phoenix. I was the few that were there, for, that were local. Everyone else was from out of state and had to come in for it. But, um, and we can also do some train the trainer stuff as well. I mean, I've been to, I've, I got all my trainings done now as district director, so I can lead some of those trainings. Yeah, no, I, I love Abbott. I think it's great for our school. I think that it's, it helps us stand apart from other schools. Um, you know, and right now we have absolutely amazing people overseeing that program mm -hmm. at the high school. So, um, just keeping in mind, I would love to make sure we keep those people if we need to attach a hard to fill stipend or something um, because we are investing a lot yep. um, in this training, which is fair. Um, so also do something to incentivize them staying. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next item on the agenda is the um, Fort McDowell representative. Yes, Fort McDowell, you have a Penn Nation board uh, representative. Um, so I did draft a little belatedly, because I know I had said, I think after the last work study session that I would get it drafted, um, a document just as a starting point for um, what this role would look like and how we select a person and some of the kind of criteria for participation. So obviously looking for any feedback from you I thought you did a great job. Okay. Um, you know, that you really laid out, you know, where they would attend, you know, what their role would be, um, that, you know, the requirements for attending me meetings, and if they didn't, you know, attend so two meetings in a three-month period that we could, they could be asked to, you know, we could ask Fort McDowell for a different representative, because attending board meetings is obviously crucial, um, especially since we only have, you know, two a month and some months one. Yes. So, um, so yeah, it's important that board members and um, the Fort McDowell rep be here together because we can't talk anywhere else. So I thought you did a great job. Yeah, I, I think it's it's perfect. And this is just to be able to get someone to represent Fort McDowell. On the yeah. Board. yeah, and so then, like I outlined in the notice and selection mm -hmm. um, section, I'd like to see that 
of, you know, between both the district and the nation that there's a message sent out in whatever channels we have available to us and hopefully, you know, at least like a 30 day period where we can elicit, hey, um, you know, if, if you are a member of the nation currently and want to serve in this role, um, reach out and submit your interest. And then um, since it, it, it is a, a representative to us, but from the nation, I feel strongly that they are the ones who should select the individual um, that will partner with them uh, in the, the representation to us. I agree. And I also like that you put that there was a, that it was a commitment of no less than two years because there's a learning curve to this job. And there's so many things that we only do once a year right. in a meeting. And until you see it the next year, you're like, uh-huh, okay. Right. Well, and I'll tell you, I was probably in my second term before I got some things that I was like, oh, okay. You know, like it finally starts clicking yeah. and stuff. And um, yeah, there's a lot of learning to this job. It, it's not an easy thing. So I, I think two years at a minimum, definitely. I loved it, I thought it was spot on. Thank you Thank for doing you. that, I appreciate <laughs> it. All right, um, I know uh, this item isn't anything I think we need to vote on um, in a formal, I'm, I'm debating, I'm like, do we need to vote on it in a formal way? It's not a We need to vote that we're agreeing I, and that we're going to agree to have a Fort McDowell yeah. and, and that we need to, um, and we probably need to and vote to give the superintendent direction, direction to, yeah, to post it. So, yeah. um, Krista, I please request that we add this as an action mm -hmm. item for our next mm -hmm. board meeting. You got Thank you. And then we get to move to the self-eval. Um, I always enjoy these because I think, um, I, know, I know we say it, I feel like we say it a lot, but I don't think we can ever say enough that really the only place that we get to meet as a board is, is here. Right. Um, if we're communicating to each other outside of a board meeting, it is literally one of us emailing Krista and saying, can you please share this with the rest of the board? Because according to open meeting laws, we cannot actually be exchanging as a quorum of members directly together. Um, so I always love seeing that knowing we really just interact with each other in this space, um, how much we end up in alignment right. on the self-eval and that we're not really all across the board with our responses and, and how we perceive our um, interactions both as a board, with administration, with the community, et cetera. Yeah, I agree. All right, so um, board relationship with the superintendent was the first category. I'm not gonna read through all of these items. Um, I will say that um, across the scoring, there's exemplary, satisfactory, needs improvement, and unsatisfactory. Um, we had one individual rank us as exemplary across the four items, and then three indicated that we were satisfactory. So again, um, pretty close alignment there. Um, there were some comments, uh, open, open um, comments that were provided that the board values the opinions and decisions of Dr. J and his staff. Uh, in just a few months, the board can see positive changes in the district. Uh, our relationship with the superintendent has gotten better, um, but this particular board member said, I still feel as though the community reaches out to the school board sometimes without following proper protocol. Um, this is an item I think is, is good for discussion. Um, it's, the rest of the comment said, I know we discussed having a decision tree for people and I think we should revisit this and I, I agree. Um, we actually had uh, an email come through this week and it was to Jill and I and one of the site principals right. and I know I forwarded it on to Dr. J because I did too. <laughs> truthfully, um, Dr. J is the only personnel in the district that the board is actually directly responsible for. He reports to us, nobody else in the district reports to us. So I felt like, okay, well you copied in the school principal, but the school principal isn't accountable to me and it would be 100% overreach for me to go to the principal and ask, are you following up on this? Well, and, and technically that violates policy because yes. staff and the personnel are not supposed to reach out to the board. Yes. They're supposed to communicate through their right. administrator. Right. So. so then I was like, well, I kind of have to forward it to Dr. J because I don't want it to go unknown to him right. that this came to us. But when we do that, 
we potentially get him involved in something that the principal may completely take care of on their own, right? So we get a lot of additional people spun up into things when they don't need to be. Um, so I do agree that uh, revisiting having some kind of this is the path to take your item actually on the governing board page where our Did email addresses to, are. Yeah. Did you talk to the teacher? <laughs> yeah. Yes. No. Or yes, it wasn't resolved. <laughs> so, you know, start but, at step one. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I agree. And we 100% can, and I, I feel like I, I do love that we have that automatic reply. Because we but that's cannot after the fact. And we, and we also, <laughs> after they've been yeah, but we also, you know, we don't get involved in HR issues. Yeah. Like we pass that off. Like, well, um, not yeah. pass it off like because we don't care because yeah. we can't get we're involved not, in yeah, these yeah. issues. That's and in not fact, the role we of the probably board. when we're copied and we know it needs to go to someone else, unfortunately. We can't ask, hey, Nadia, did you forward it to Dr. J? So no. we probably all forwarded it to Dr. <laughs> yes. J. Um, but I wasn't part of this other email, so I have yep. no idea what you're talking about. Um, and I won't know, because that's how right. school boards because we work. Can't tell you. To you. Um, because that's how school boards work. Um, yeah. Only Nadia and I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't know if I even care. But we can't talk really about know. it either. Yeah. 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 No, um, it's good you know, can just, laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, but just, and I don't know what it is, so I don't know. If it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have anything. No, okay. but um, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. We we could make um, some improvements there in uh, helping the community understand what the board's role is, which doesn't mean that we don't want to hear from people. But really, the venue for people to speak to us is a board meeting. I know that in the past, people have said that you know it's kind of daunting to come in front of us at a board meeting, but. This is our venue. This is our venue, unfortunately. Um, and uh, yes, there is a proper chain to follow if you have like a grievance or an issue with you know something that's going on at a school site or school personnel and going to the board first thing is not the path to follow. Well, and I look at it like this because we do want to, we want people to, to know that we are open to listening to them. If you have a comment or a concern that you would like to express, you're more than welcome to send us an email. If you are looking for us to fix something or respond to you, you need to go to the proper, through the proper channels because we can't, you know, we're not going to respond on issues that are happening in the school district or things that need fixed. That's not our role. And so then it just puts it back on Dr. J's plate, which then he just has to go back to the principal and go, you know, and follow up with them. So. If, if you just want to share information with us, you know, that's one thing. But if you're looking for us to fix and it, action. That, yeah. that's not, we just can't do that other than sharing it with Dr. J. Yes. And I realized that this first section was board relationship with the superintendent, but then we, you know, in starting on that item, which is uh, the comment was, you know, people reaching out to the school board um, and instead of the superintendent or instead of the proper personnel, um, and then our commentary around that shifted into the next item, which is board relationship with the community, which across these items, again, um, pretty closely aligned. Um, one individual across all three said exemplary and um, three said uh, satisfactory. Um, the comments here, uh, one says, I believe the board has been successful when making decisions based on the whole student body and not particular groups. While many groups let uh, politics impact their decisions, our board is nonpartisan and its decisions are made based on the best interest of the district and student population. Another comment said um, that this is difficult, meaning relationship with the community, and this goes back to what we just discussed. We want people to follow proper protocol before coming to the board, but often we are approached with issues from the community that are really only about one child, not all the children in our district. Uh, I appreciate the out of office replies that we put on our board email to help, but it might be worth another Falcon Focus that explains what the governing board is responsible for, not day to day operations, but rather high level policy decisions. Uh, board relationships between members during meetings, which again, we're not really supposed to have. <laughs> um, so uh, we were, you know, across exemplary and satisfactory on all of these items. Uh, comments were, our board members respect each other and value the opinions of other members. While we may not always agree, the board members stand behind the decisions of the board as a whole, um, because as we know, we, you know, 
the decisions, while we have five separate votes when we're a full board, um, when a decision is made, we're a body of one, and That's that right. is the board's decision. That's right. Um, I think the board functions very well and is professional in all manners. It is a small community and we all have relationships with people within the community. Given that, we all do our best to do what is best for kids and teachers regardless of our own biases. Then uh, the next section was board relationships with staff and personnel. We did have a little um, departure here uh, across the three questions. One of the questions uh, was the board members make every effort to become acquainted with personnel of the district. Um, one person said exemplary, while, while three said needs improvement. And then on the other questions, we were um, pretty well aligned along exemplary and satisfactory. Um, I, I always find that, you know, trying to become acquainted with the personnel in the district is difficult. As we discussed right. tonight, we have, you know, mm -hmm. well over 100 uh, members, uh, employees in the district, right? Um, and the board, we can't go to schools every week. That's not, like, that would be kind of overreach, right? right. Like, why, why is the board in the school every week? Um, so as much as we want to get to know teachers and staff, um, we shouldn't be going to schools alone. We can't be dragging him to schools with us so that we can meet all of the staff all the time. I mean, <laughs> we could. <laughs> <laughs> apparently we are the boss of him. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think he's a little busy. You know? Yes. Yeah. No, and I, I agree. And it, it does get it does get tricky because you know as a parent, there's times. I mean, it hasn't happened too recently, but there were times where I would go to something as a mom. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm bombarded with school board things, which is is okay. I mean, I'm the one who took on this position, of course. But right. um, it does get difficult, you know, wearing you know a mom hat, school board member hat. And just like a friendly face and that, you know, where I, you know, one time I went to a meeting and a teacher was like, why is she here? And I was like, not there for any bad reason, but they thought I was there as a school board member, like they were getting in trouble. And, you know, so I think that it's a lot more complex than some people think, you know, that. The, for us to be. And, yeah. you, ha you know, um, we don't deal with HR issues. So, you know, we all have friends with people that work. Right. Like, Chris and I are going to become great friends in January. Um, but, like, we are. Um, you know, that gets tricky, too, because at some point maybe someone loses a job or they have to come in front of us for a hearing or all these different things. So in some ways we need to, <coughs> excuse me, in some ways more than a big district, have the really maintain distance. a, um, yeah. you know, sort of a firewall there. Dr. Wright did not like this question. Every <laughs> this, this was like the thorn, in, the question of the thorn in his side every year when we did this because Dr. Wright felt that the board should always maintain a distance from staff, and you know, and he had valid points. So you know, and just like Dr. Barnard said, you know, it, it's hard. You know, we already know a lot of these people, like just because we live here, right? Um, but you know, like. We have a new staff breakfast. It probably would be nice if, if board members attended. And that's where, like, um, you know, I'm trying to be more present at, like, the Coffee with Kane and stuff. And so, now, granted, staff isn't there. But things like that, that maybe not necessarily, like, a one-on-one -on -one get to know you type yes. thing. Mm -hmm. But I think the board could make a better effort to be present, like, at Red Ribbon Week this week. That we have those opportunities to go in when there are activities going on, as opposed to just an individual, like, going in. Um, you know, sitting in classrooms or, you know, periodically, you know, I'll meet with the principal and go walk to school just because I've done that forever. I don't sit in classrooms. I don't think that's appropriate. Um, that's not my job. That's his job yeah. and the super and the principal's jobs. But I do go walk because I do like, you know, I, I've known these teachers for a long time and they like to see that face, you know, and Periodically, I've gotten pulled into classrooms, and the kids want to chat with me and stuff. <laughs> and, and I love that. I love that part. Um, but I never just pop in on people. I don't, you know, I don't want our teachers to feel uncomfortable. But I think we could do a better job of getting to know them, you know, on a professional level at events and things like that. So, and I think that then that um, sort of um, needs to rely on principals. Like, what are they comfortable inviting us to? Correct. Um, so, 
you know, more invitations um, so that we know, okay, Red Ribbon Day, oh, it's it's good for us to be here. Um, you know, that's okay. I didn't get invited, but I'm going anywhere on Friday. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll wear my badge. I'm good. <laughs> for Red Ribbon Day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the, it's like the, they welcome like the, the community. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. So I figured I was community. Yeah. I could go. Well, I thought, <laughs> well, they did that really cute thing, the picture. Oh, the, yeah, the picture was oh, great. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. So see, that's why. Um, I can't go on Friday, but you know certain <laughs> things like that. You know where they won't see us as intruding, but rather theirs is supporting. As supporting, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for the next section is board relationships to the instructional program. Um, for the first question, we had an exemplary, a <clears throat> too satisfactory, and a needs improvement. That's board makes an effort to keep informed about the instructional program by providing for periodic reports as deemed necessary and by periodic visitation in the schools. Um, the other two items that are associated with gaining information from the community and maintaining policies uh, necessary to enable the educational staff um, the, were an exemplary and then several satisfactory. Uh, comments here are the board has continued public comments to hear the concerns of parents and community members, whether it be regarding instruction policies or day-to-day -day school activities. Another comment is, I appreciate the details provided on instructional matters but I do not necessarily think the community always understands. I think it would be great to educate community members, board members, and families on instruction happening in our district. And then the final section is uh, board relationship to the financial management of schools. Um, so that's policies and procedures uh, to manage finances um, that we provide, require proper accountability for expenditure of funds. Uh, that we provide justified funding to maintain high quality educational programs and that we keep the community informed about the financial needs. Um, we had one year where we were all aligned. We all said satisfactory for um, providing justified funding to maintain high quality educational programs in the district. Um, I, the two here um, that I uh, also want to call out um, exemplary, two satisfactory, and one needs improvement for the board requires proper accountability for the expenditure of funds in the district. I um, want to say thank you to um, Dr. J and Krista for um, putting more information in front of us um, over the past several months with, you know, POs over certain pr purchase amounts and um, things like that. Some of those are, are no surprise, like when you saw the utilities, right? But it's still great for us to have that uh, additional level of transparency. Um, so uh, hopefully this will be scored a little bit better uh, on next year's evaluation. And then um, the other one where we were also one exemplary, two satisfactory, and one needs improvement um, is the board keeps the community informed about the financial needs of the district. And I think that's a tough one because um, I don't know. I if they don't listen to the if they don't listen to the meetings <laughs> yes or go to the website it, it's very difficult to you know keep them informed we don't publish it in the newspaper right so and yeah. it's not something that we're going to put in a falcon focus that's not really the the venue no for that they type have to of... they have to seek it out yeah so. exactly so um, and go ahead well and i was just going to say i was the one that said needs improvement on the accountability just because you know and my comment to that was improvements been made regarding proper accountability on expenditures, but continued improvement is appreciated. Yeah. Because I do appreciate all those things that, that we get in our board meeting now, but I've had such a procurement, you know, yes. fetish right now. So, you know, well, I'm, not, I'm still not like previous 100%. years audit right. results and yes. So exactly. it's still something that's that's right in my radar. And um, so, yeah, I think next year it'll be scored better. But this year, being that we were only in the first quarter of school, yeah, I'm still going to say it needs improvement because you we always need room for improvement. Yeah, 100. percent And and I agree with the um, comment here that essentially um, talks about um, being able to provide some kind of um, information and education to the community about school budgets because they work a lot differently than just a regular business budget. Right. Nope. So no, nope. I, I agree. I have one comment. Yeah, Dr. Rakowski, are you still back there? No, no, no. Oh, he left. Oh, well, Mrs. Rakowski would be very proud that we did this. Yes, she is. Yeah, because she was she always, was very, always proud. very proud. Yes. Um, and then the last section is just additional comments, which is a, a free form, anything else you want to say. Um, so the comments that we have in there are 
Uh, all the above has been positively, so all of the items above in the, in the questionnaire have been positively influenced by bringing in our new superintendent. Um, there is always room for improvement, but the board and administration are working hard to improve the overall performance of our district. Hopefully this will continue as new board members are sworn in. Uh, another member commented, the board has made decisions over this past year to improve our school district and relations with the community. Hiring Dr. J was the first step in turning our district in a positive direction. And then the last comment here, while each board member brings their own experience and background to the role, as a body of one, we are aligned in working to provide a high quality education for students and a pleasant and supportive environment for students and staff. Right. It's, it is always, I enjoy the exercise, I really do. I don't usually enjoy uh, self-evaluations, but I enjoy seeing um, you know, what we all have to say and um, working to continuously improve ourselves as a board for the benefit of the district. It was much easier this year. I agree with that as well. Uh, all right, then we get into our policy advisories that we pulled aside so that we could wordsmith. So exciting, people. Like Dana's not here. <laughs> he's like, I'm out. Yeah. He's, he's sitting in his uh, little uh, recliner in the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> laughing at us, going through the words He's probably that watching are underlined, yeah. discussed here in. Dana should be here. Wordsmith these things. <laughs> All right, so let me get to the correct page. We're starting with JRRR student surveys. Um, was this one the one that we were just like, I think I might have been the person, because I know that I've talked about this for a while. Um, our district is one of the few districts who doesn't require an additional um, board approval for surveys. A lot of districts, right. yeah, yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. districts do require board approval. Like for each individual survey before yes. it, so that the board kind of can peruse yes. the... And like, I mean, they're not bad. I remember one year, the kids were going to the Science Center, and Jake came home and was like, oh, I filled out a survey, and if we fill it out, we get a free ticket to the Science Center. And, then it's and like, my researcher so happened got on, like, <laughs> they shouldn't, I don't know what was in that survey. Like, I'm sure it was fine, but that's no. Like, I, I think that um, if there's things that are done as part of educational instruction. Like, I'm fine with the teacher giving, like, a, a survey a for feedback kids. on yeah, something. Exactly. Um, but if it's going to an outside entity. I think that students should never get anything without coming to the board and being open to being available to parents to review. Um, you know, uh, obviously, um, you know, you have to go through IR Institutional Review Board um, at a university. And for this, like I think uh, Mrs. Uh, D's example was good. Yeah. She had gone through, she came, she presented to the board, and I think that that should be our standard practice um, with anything that goes not just to students, but to faculty, staff, not for internal use. Yeah. Like I'm not asking Mr. Buckley to do that. Um, because that's for program improvement, but for anything that solicits anything that isn't normally part of our educational um, programming, I think that we need to have some kind of protocol. Okay, so basically when I'm looking at the regulation as presented, um, in the first section, student surveys as defined, the second paragraph, it says no survey that solicits personal information, da 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 um, without being approved and authorized by the superintendent. So you would want that to be by the board. By the board and the superintendent. I mean, I, I think that... I would like the superintendent to see it first yeah. and then make a decision whether That's what I was it should say. come to the board. Yeah, like authorized by the superintendent. Um, and then approved by the board? But, yeah, and approved by the board. Um, that maybe it should be without being, um, with, it shall be conducted without the superintendent, um, without the superintendent um, recommending approval from the board. Because obviously, if the superintendent is is asking for 
approval from the board. We assume that the superintendent has, has read it. Reviewed it and has okayed right. it to pass up to the right. board. So yeah, yeah. And definitely um, we have to have and then parental consent. Yeah, that's, I mean, there's, there's no, a whole section on that. Yeah. yeah. I, um, yes, pupil or parent parental consent um, required prior to administering. Um, and then uh, I was looking through the list in uh, categories that apply, one through 14 categories. Um, so it sounds like we should add an additional category um, because this is all the, any survey that solicits these types of personal information but we are saying that we would also want to add is really any survey that would go to an outside entity, right? I believe you had said um, that wasn't in support of the um, their classroom instruction. Yeah, because I mean there's things that kids fill out that are tied directly to classroom instruction. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at some of this like political stuff, like the scholastic I remember voting in the fifth grade, the scholastic, presidential, like, I mean, that's been around forever. Um, and it's used as a learning opportunity. It's not used as a survey to collect data. Um, so I just want to be clear, I don't want to uh, trample on teachers' ability to collect information from students that are part of the educational activity. But anything that is above or beyond that um, has to be approved by you, approved by the board, and parental consent. So, so that, that's my question. Like, for example, we use a Google survey for reteach. Nope, that's, that's uh, programmatic. Well, that's, sorry, yeah. For that's, reteach, for yeah. Saturday catch up. Yeah, no, so that if you want to attend, I just want to be clear, somebody could say, like, this didn't go to the, nope. so, so we might want to no. just be clear yeah, right. that to gather, and, and like I'm saying, you know, it's information like for to attend outside and Because that's, partici that's participation. Yeah. Correct. So uh, participation, survey, data collection for prom, whatever it is, is excluded. This is for data like collection. Like your example, collected. the Arizona Science Center wanted these kids to fill out the survey, and mm -hmm. then the survey that they filled out went to the Arizona Science that Center for them to go to use right. who knows what that data for. Yes. yes. So I, I think we need to be clear about that, that it should, you know, that it should say that uh, no survey that solicits no survey for outside agencies that solicits personal information about a pupil regarding any of the listed categories mm -hmm. below shall be conducted without a without recommendation from the superintendent requesting approval from the board. Mm -hmm. And I think for those categories, we'd say for both, right? For for us or for an outside organization, for, uh, yeah, we, that would go through. Or that would be a parent permission. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, Google Forms, I use them all day, every day. Right. Yeah. I just no, want to make sure that. No, it's not to, know. It's it's not not to collect to, information yeah, for program and like, Because you have, you have math assignments where it's like survey, you know, well, I, five I, kids in your class, so they do, do this yeah. graph, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's no. for educational that's, activities, yeah. participation, so, program and right. But yeah. even in school surveys should not fall in these categories. Right. But so to collect information for, like, for example, what I just said to parents, I want to send something similar, and we can talk about it, to yeah. students, at least on my, starting with the advisory board, and then moving outward to get their feedback on what do they feel right. about scheduling and the important needs that, that need to be addressed. And that's program improvement. Okay, so, so program improvement would be something completely different. Yeah, so then we maybe need we need to... Exempt. <laughs> Maybe we need to say no survey from the following categories or mm -hmm. for outside agencies mm -hmm. that solicit personal information about people. So from the following categories for everybody mm -hmm. or outside agencies. And I still think that any survey, even if it is to um, program improvement, should probably be at least principal approved at the site level so that they're aware and then if they have any questions about this is on the borderline of yeah they can bring it to to me to see if that's something that needs to come to the board. okay okay can i just read yeah that? i know i know yeah, so i'm like Chris, are you getting yeah. it all <laughs> so that second paragraph should read no surveys from the following categories or 
for outside agencies that solicit, solicits personal information about a pupil regarding any of the listed categories in ERS shall be conducted without recommending approval by the superintendent. Superintendent. No, no, by no, the board. No. Without no. recommending no. approval. The superintendent. He recommended to us, and then we without, But I don't think we need to say regarding, like, I don't think we need to say regarding the listed categories because we already have, like, that, like that's in there twice now. Okay. So I would say yeah, no that. survey in the listed categories mm -hmm. or for any agency, for any outside agency mm -hmm. that solicits personal information about a pupil shall be conducted without recommendation from the superintendent to the board for approval. And okay. approved by the board. Right. Yeah, it needs to be recommended by the superintendent and then approved by the board. And then it says a teacher or other school employee may not administer any survey regarding a ARS 15117 without obtaining written authorization from the superintendent. Which is fine because he'll, he knows he brings it. Right. Us. Yes. Yeah. I like that. Do you want to reread that, Krista? Um, I, I just hope my, tape, my recording is. <laughs> well, we can always we can yeah, yeah you can you can you can email her directly if you need to and she'll yeah we can okay. the language oh yeah and let's, let's just put there. that in there yeah I just, agree like for participation in activities and I would say or, participation activities or instructional improvement um, you know somehow is is, is allowable the principal. I'll work with you on that tomorrow. Yep. The next one, KIR, Visitors to Schools. Can I just say before you go into that? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to redline these. Yeah, yeah. And Thank then you. I will send them to you guys before I submit them to policy board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because as a reminder, the regulations don't actually need us yep. to formally vote. Yeah. Right. But we want to make sure that we're all on the same page before Correct. they get uploaded yeah. out there. That's good. I was thinking this was our next meeting, too. No, we don't <laughs> have to then vote on all of these. But yeah. this is like time four for this. <laughs> we do have action items, I think, next meeting. And Something. Something. Yeah, yeah like that, yeah. That, that, that second it's policy advisory right. that came in. Yeah. yeah. So parents of enrolled pupils and parents who wish to enroll their children in the school district are encouraged, got changed to May. May visit, tour, and observe the school. We cannot, the, the reason that it's encouraged is people, how do you operationalize encourage? Yeah. And there are people who are not allowed on our school sites who we know about. So we and can't encourage encouraging them that. puts us in legal jeopardy because they may not be within 100 feet of a school. Okay, well, how can we come up with a, a word somewhere in the middle of that? <laughs> Should be provided an opportunity. Parents of enrolled pupils and parents who wish to enroll their children Should in the school district. So am I reading that as it's only for if you're enrolling? Yeah, no, it's, that's it's, the way it's I, enrolled, way. Pupil um, enrolled pupils or those parents. that wish to oh, enroll okay. their children. Okay. So, so this isn't like for the outside community. No, this, this is, is regarding a parent, right. a current parent or just, an interested yeah, I just parent. just saw the second part. Yeah, yeah. I heard you say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And it's not even really for volunteers. No, no it's, it's not. literally, and that's. And I understand because it's like, why would you take out Encourage? Don't you want parents right. to be there? But as we pointed out, um, you know, we've heard that from parents who are really active, which is great, but they don't have restraining orders on them right. that they can't come to the school. <laughs> and right? I don't, yeah, and, and do I don't think parents, the so average can't, And like you said, you can't oper operationalize, encourage, so somebody could argue, well, you aren't following policy because you aren't encouraging me. How do you determine what is encouraged? Right. So having like, yeah, they should have, well, they should have, have the opportunity. opportunity. They should have the opportunity. Right. Right. Well, then maybe we need to, maybe it needs to say parents have enrolled pupils, comma, parents who wish to enroll their children, or any other person who wishes to visit the school, you know, like, 
Because that's what I understand. It says visitors to school. Well, just parents are not the only visitors that come here. This is true. So it's not just about visitors to school. This is specifically about parents. So, um, oh, it does others, say down below, like all visitors. I know, to any school. but so this then it's not paragraph clear. Is it only it, for parents, or right. is it for any? That's what I'm saying. Is that I think we need to change that first building. sentence that says parents have enrolled people, you know, or oh, yeah. or we can just change visitors who wish you know, who wish to visit the school district. Um, yeah, because again, then the exhibit is visitors to schools, and it again says parents of enrolled pupils and parents who wish to enroll their children. Right. We might have visitors for other reasons who might want to tour the school. The school, right. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's, it, it kind of is like a two, two thing. And so we, I guess we need to decide, is it visitors to school or is it parents who want to visit the school? Yeah. Um, well, you, do you just take out that first sentence? Off and the then, paper? and if you go to the exhibit, it says parents of enrolled pupils and parents who wish to enroll their children have yeah. to fill out this form. Right. right. So this makes it sound like it's just parents of Only parents students or <laughs> perspective, but then they throw the word visitor in there. Well, but maybe, I guess visitor could be a guardian or a grandparent. Well, maybe like yes. Krista said, maybe we take out that first sentence because and just pick it up right where it says, visitors, including parents and parents of prospective pupils, must follow the school's procedure for scheduling visits, tours, or observations. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm good. I like that. I am. And I do, too. Good job, Krista. Oh. Yeah. Maybe just get rid of that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, because why do we need to say second. that they're encouraged mm -hmm. or that they can tour and observe the schools and classrooms? It, Really, the, the thing is, they just need to follow the rules. So, um, and then where it says the district may discontinue visits, tours, and observations if such events or threat, events threaten the health and safety of the pupils and staff. You know, we have discontinue circled, but in all reality, when COVID hit, we could not let people on campus. So, you know, if we don't want to say discontinue, we can say may limit um, visits, tours, and observations. Um, I like I like that because that also then brings in we all know like I'm talking about someone who is not allowed on campus who comes right. in acting okay. like they want to right. visit so yeah. they is, have is like it has to it's then, discontinue yeah. or disallow yeah, yeah. you know like um, I think limit is good so mm -hmm. that they may limit yeah. so you know we're not saying, you know, and then it kind of gives the, the district the leeway of saying, yes, you can come or no, you can't because we have the right to limit. And they can't so. do an observation on a test day, like a well, different right. standardized That's test. Like there's that. rules, like common sense rules that we shouldn't have to spell out. Right. Um, so it needs to give us a little um, flexibility. Right. Yeah. So, so I would use limit as opposed to discontinue. Okay. I have that. And then I suppose on the exhibit, um, it should just say, Visitors to the school district must fill out this form. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. But like we have a visitors law. That I know. Completed like this form. Is it's like redundant. Yeah. Like it, it's. And it's almost. Yeah. So maybe a little we unreasonable. Well, and this is almost like I'm submitting a request is. to have a tour, but. But they Somebody schedule would, tours with this. With I the know principal. they would email yeah. somebody. They wouldn't yeah. use this form. So maybe we like, just pull I, this and don't maybe. need an exhibit. We don't have to have an exhibit. No, we don't. So why don't we just pull it? Yeah, strike it. Okay. Moving right. on. Moving on. Parental involvement in education. Ab dash r. Um, Somebody should have taken notes while we pulled it. I know. Um, this is the we don't want again people who aren't allowed in our schools or just random people coming by, um, going into the library or going into random classrooms. Um, so I think this yeah, was so more, it's like, yeah. do we have a, that they need to get permission. Yeah. I think that was, there I think that was like really that one, one I feel like do. there almost should be an exhibit that's like, if you want, um, not to make it unnecessarily difficult, but that is something that I feel like if they want to come in and, um, actually, or is this just getting the records? 
access this to is... written electronic records. Oh, uh, are we going to put a time thing in here? Uh, that it may take time. That yeah, that there there has to be a reasonable expectation. Yes. Of, and uh, I'm waiting for that. Um, that if they request certain things, that they have. And we weren't sure how library books is that that's all electronic, so that would be easy to pull. Um, but we don't keep written records of that um, versus electronic records. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then, you, there isn't anything in here, yeah, about uh, an expected turnaround time for this request, right? Mm -hmm. So like, then. I think that's what we're talking about, like five business section. days, or right. like so what is a reasonable, a fair amount of time for teachers and staff to do it, but also reasonable enough for families who need this. Yeah. Is this the one that we were talking about with time, though? Mm -hmm. Get, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. may access the school's library collection of books and materials through following procedures. Parents may request a list of books and materials. Yeah, oh yeah, then parents then must then re yeah may request. So yeah, so parents may request the written and electronic records accessible under ARS fifteen one forty three from the district office, including but not limited to all the following. So maybe that's where we need to put something in yes. that you know records will be provided in a timely fashion, mm -hmm. um, with the expectation to be provided no more than five business days after, after the request, request or something. Received, something like after receipt of the request. Yes. Yeah. But I think we needed confirmation when we discussed last time that that was a reasonable time frame. Because we're like guessing that yeah. five business days would be okay. But we Dr. Don't J know. likes the number five. <laughs> <laughs> this um, it's just, it's just, you know, I don't, I don't know if anyone's ever, ha you know, has an access for that. So I don't know how long it takes to do it. That's that. That's the only thing. So if it's all so, digital, so we we need to have a practice exercise. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, we can do that. We can have the librarian pull the the data and see how long it takes to get it, and if we just have it available. Yeah. Especially that might be a good a good one to pull. Like if she can pull, you know, maybe five random kids, kids, to yeah, like, and yeah. see how long it would take her to pull a list of books and materials borrowed from the library because that's probably the biggest one. Attendance records, you know, grades, extracurricular activities, disciplinary that's records, all of those things. Post. Right, yeah. exactly. So probably the library <clears throat> books is probably the biggest one. So that is not one that is regularly done that we have a frame of reference well, for the, the duration. The vast majority of that's going to be at the K-5 level and, and I don't know if McDowell Mountain, they don't, don't believe, use IDs like we do at, like at the high school right. secondary level to scan. So I, uh, that's but they have I'm some thinking. way of tracking they books. Do. They do. Because when they're they lost, they're not right. 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 you get charged she should for be that. able to run around. So that's what yeah. yeah. By yeah. class, the teacher's there with them when they check out the books. So right. I just would say let's let's maybe get a, a good feel of how, how much time it takes. Yeah. yeah, so let's table this one until we get a picture of how long it, it actually takes. Okay. So we're tabling it for the library section, correct? correct? Yeah. Yep. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. the rest of it should be fairly easy to pull out of power schools and everything. Mm -hmm. Most of that data is there, but okay. So what did you want to put as a time frame for the um, access to written and electronic records? I mean, honestly, I don't want there to be uh, like separate. Like, if you request this, it's this many. Oh, okay. Days. We just I, don't want to make we'll it. Just do it all okay. right. Mm -hmm. It'll be all one thing once we have a picture for how long the library piece will take. That it sounds like we just don't know yet. Right. It could be two business days. It could be five. Yeah. I feel like, uh, and and I this may be uh, unnecessary. You mm -hmm. guys may feel this is unnecessary, but kind of like with the um, Freedom of Inf Information Act, like I have to respond to them within five days, mm -hmm. and then I can do mine in a reasonable amount of time. But that some of those take me forever. So that yeah. that time frame is not the same. Yes. But I feel like we should include, you will receive a response oh, within right. this amount of time and then, with, yeah. with your, you know. Acknowledging. Your request yes. being done within this amount of time. Yeah, so, I yeah. agree. Let's receive for request will be. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Next is KBEB, Parental Involvement in Education Parental Parents Bills Bill of Rights.
observation, I don't think I've ever seen that word actually <laughs> used in a sentence, that the interference or usurpation, usurp I see, usurpation, is essential to accomplish. Oh, is it, is it because of the word here? Are you is saying, it, was it because it says parent? And that's as opposed like to guardian. guardian. Uh, yeah, it might be that. Because I was just thinking, it says, the all parental rights are exclusively reserved to a parent of a minor child. And there are circumstances it's where it's somebody a guardian, has a legal it's not guardian. A parent. And so I feel like, yeah, we should make it say guardian. Right. It, it should be like a parent slash guardian bill of rights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a parent. Because I don't see anything else other than the word allowed. I don't like the word allowed. So, but you want it to specify legal guardian, though. Yes. yes. It, yeah, it has to be a legal, legal guardian. guardian. Mm -hmm. So, it, it will not because a child parent. just chose right, to go. Right, but have that you know, <laughs> yeah. verbatim on this form. Yes. Yeah. Parent slash legal, legal guardian. guardian. Yeah. And then anywhere where it says parent, add slash legal guardian. Yes. I, yeah, I think so. Okay. Actually, although if you go to R, it says for the purpose of this section, parent means the natural. Or legal guardian of a minor child. For the, okay, for the purposes of this section, section R, like I don't understand. Why is that at the bottom of the document? Right. Why doesn't it say that? Why isn't that at the top of the document? I think it's fine just to can just yeah, add legal because mm -hmm. people who don't read to the bottom of the document. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, the only other thing that I can see is the word allowed that instead of where they took out yeah. permitted by law, which I don't understand that. Now it says allowed by law. Do you want me to change allowed back to permitted? Or is that just too tough? <laughs> yeah, let me let me see okay. if I can come up with a different word. Okay. Where do you see? Is it under L? Yeah, page thirty two of ninety nine is what it says. So this section does Sorry. not prohibit a court from issuing an order that is otherwise allowed by law as opposed to otherwise permitted by law. That's right. I know, like why would you use the word allowed? I'll wordsmith out. Okay. Okay. Moving on to J I C F A E D hazing. Um, we had circled here to be displayed in school buildings and placed in student handbooks. But I felt like Wendy, you wanted yes. to hold to look over. And that is because, and you know what? I just, I literally just threw those out. But when you look at section 13-1215 and 13-1216 that describes hazing, they are multiple, multiple pages. Yeah. So I think what my concern was, are they in our student handbooks and where are we gonna be displaying? All um, of that. Because it's a lot. Um, where do we just say no hazing? Like what is the... Um, I feel like it's just the exhibit that is displayed okay. and put in the handbook referring to those um, statutes. And so I would just want to make sure that those statutes are, someone ava are somewhere available for people to see. If we're referring them to them, referring them to well, them. Well, we can have them on our website under, like, yeah. mm -hmm. don't we have, like, a document section on our website? No, but we can. Mm -hmm. That might be a good idea. Yeah. We have an hazing document in Register My Athlete. I right. know. Everyone yeah. has to sign it. Yeah. We well, put in years ago. Maybe, um, and so is the whole hate, like, is Section 13-12115 and 13-1216, is that whole thing in our handbook? I don't think so. It okay. Was, it was more we took from the law conference that year. Um, we built the form ourselves using references to that. We referenced it, but it wasn't outlined. But we did outline what it is and then how to report. And then every student and coach is supposed to sign it so 
everyone knows how to report. I just want to call out that organization means an athletic team, association, order, society, core, <coughs> cooperative, club, or similar group, which yeah. means that it's not just the student athletes, not, it's yeah. the right. key Correct. club, it's, everything. It's, right. yeah, everything. it's all of right. those groups need to yes. really understand. So that and could if, be in their constitutions, right. and their clubs. We just started with athletics, and then it was easy to put it in register my athlete. It was just back then it wasn't at this level, yeah. right. and we were trying to be proactive mm -hmm. and not have an issue, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we put it in. So um, we can definitely um, any any organization, which really for us um, is either a club or a sport. I can't think of any other organization we have that really wouldn't fall into that. You know those FHEA people, they might be hating. Yeah, and then we could do, and we could do it. We could put it, we could also put whatever we put in register map and in the club documents in the student handbook, um, which I think the student handbook already has a hazing section. It right. probably does. I just, I just want to make sure I that I just felt like it was like, look at this, and you know, look at this means nothing unless you can actually. Well, can get we that. like. Uh, under the on the website, there's a link for the handbook. So can we have like a subsection under that handbook that has like the Amazing. hazing document mm -hmm. and have yep. you know thirteen, twelve, mm -hmm. fifteen, and thirteen, yeah. twelve, sixteen. Yeah. So then people can access it. It's on the website. You can read the whole document. It's just it doesn't have to take up a million pages of the handbook. Mm -hmm. But you know, like a subsection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that would solve that. Yes, that but is. let's also make sure that it gets included in any club. Yes. Constitution. Yeah, they should all be signing that hazing document yeah. that the athletes have to sign. I, I agree. So you guys don't want any changes to verbiage on this? No. No, but, this was okay. more like let's talk about how we're going to facilitate this whole thing. Okay. Which I, know I, will, isn't. I will also make sure that um, the offices have them and that they are posted. Um, the only thing I would say is that instead of just saying two to be di displayed, I would say exhibit to be displayed okay. so that they don't feel that we're in violation by not displaying the, the whole, whole document. Okay. Right. So, yeah. Good yeah. point. And I wonder if that's where my concern was Could too. Be. I think so. Yeah. Nice job. All right. Um, and then it is IJLR, Library Materials Selection and Adoption. And I think this is also where we were worried about. Um, the time um, for the librarian to do this, and even the um, well, this we, is just for the the review of materials and right. purchases. But yes, and it already says that yeah, seven school days it. prior to the opening date of a public review period, each common school and high school operated by the school district shall notify the parents of each enrolled pupil of the opening and closing dates for public review. So we and we already do that. Mm -hmm. But this is um, a list of all books and materials purchased. So for public review, the superintendent shall make available on the school district website and on each school's website a list of all books and materials purchased after January 1st, 2023. So we have to make sure that we're clearly documenting, I think, in a separate section on the website right. that mm -hmm. just keeps getting added to. Right. This is everything that's been purchased. Well, it says it has to be there for, for 60 days. days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to publish if we purchase books or materials intended to replace lost or damaged books. Um, but this is specific to library materials. Okay, mm -hmm. so this isn't the same as when we say a teacher wants to have this novel as part of their thing and we put it on display. This is every time the librarian wants to buy new books for right. the library, which like when, isn't something So that, what do we do at the Scholastic Book Fair when parents are buying uh, tons of books and to donating them, them to and the donating. library? They don't go into the library, they go into teachers' libraries. Those books, um, the librarian gets money from, uh, like the PTO will tell the librarian, you have this, this many dollars to spend. Mm -hmm. And the librarian goes through and picks out her own books, his or her own books. Um, but, but when then that, when would fall that would this. fall here. Mm -hmm. But when a teak when a uh, parent, parent buys pulls it the teacher, it. Yeah. that usually goes directly to the teacher's classroom. Yeah, so yeah. um so that's you know, this is specific to libraries. Yeah. It's not specific because to Because we don't have currently any kind of the 
librarian wants to buy 100 new titles this year. Right. No, because they, she usually, he or she usually buy them from Scholastic through the PTO mm -hmm. money. Yeah. yeah. And so how do we do that if it's more of a wish list for the librarian and I have to have them on public display and I don't have a hard copy of it? Is it the book that needs to be on display or the list of the books? A list, a of, list all of all books. Just a list? Just a list. So you so just I'm put like the just list, list on the website, you know, under, you know, probable books for library. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like books under consideration. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so just anything after this coming January, mm -hmm. we just have to have like a running list mm -hmm. that it has to stay up there for at least 60 days. And then, which... If it were me, I would just leave it up leave there, it up there. Yeah. because, mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah, otherwise, you know, you're going to have to date them that it, you're going to have to know which ones. And if there's a way that they could just go in alphabetical order. Well, couldn't we just do yeah. it? Like, and truthfully, this says public which, review period for adoption of books and materials purchase. I'm, tr I'm still trying to figure out because it says that you can't remove the purchases. So it talks about them as purchases. So it's not that the librarian has to have them on display before they're purchased, but after they get purchased, they have to be listed there for 60 days. 60 days. So, yeah, so that basically if then someone has a problem with them, they, they can, can come, make, right. It, yeah, so we can just do it complaint. in batches, like, you know, like this week we have this, or this month we have this many books, and then it's easy to keep track of the 60 days because we just do it once a month or whatever it is. And yeah. Or I could just put the date next. Book, could, right. but yeah. mm -hmm. it might be easier just to wait until they're ready to purchase several because it is different than a school set like a class specific book mm -hmm. yeah. this is you know for enjoyment of reading and to have more books in the library so they're probably purchasing those in batches anyway not individually right. probably best. I would yeah. hope not yeah, yeah. I, I think our worry also was we don't want to I mean who's Who's going to make this list? Get it on the website. I think and we were worried it, about yeah. the, um, the feasibility human of capital. complying with. Yeah, but if it is all from Scholastic, they should have some type of invoice that you could probably put into right. a chart or something. How do you read this though? At the very bottom, the following are exempt from the requirements of the public review period discussed herein. Schools without a full-time library media specialist. But we do remember we asked that the last time at the middle school. We do have a full-time. Right, we library. do have. She's part time there and part time at McHale Mountain. Like we share her between the um, two schools. Technically, but, but she's a full time, time employee, employee of the district. Um, so we're not exempt. I don't know what, what her. Because the other the other thing would be is are they are they a classified employee are they a certified media specialist? Those are two different positions. Right. So that'd be something else to get clarification. And written by someone who was never. In a in school. A school. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to skirt around no, no, this by trying to, to put this together. Right. That, that person yeah, can do it real quickly. We and have to give her time to it, pull it, these it, things together, it, it and it needs, it needs right. to be part and of her job duties, and she needs to get paid. Yeah. Well, and, and it's only new books, new books that are right. put not purchased. So, anything that's already in the library, yeah. it, it's not like she doesn't have to go through the whole library, although well, that's our next one. That's a segue into the next one. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, I would think moving forward, moving it, should forward be, it shouldn't be hard to maintain right. a list, put them on display, order them after 60 days. That should not be an issue. Um, I just, I don't think that that should fall on, depending on what that title is. Mm -hmm. If they're not a certified media specialist, right. there should be other people involved in the decision of what books were purchased. Right. So, that's something yeah. we will talk to Correct. principals about at our next principal meeting. Well, this kind of goes back to the same one. Upon request, parents may receive a list of books and materials borrowed from the library by their children. Didn't we just do this? No, this was... That yes. was electronic records. No, it talked about library books. Yeah, and yeah, then it referred the to this... Yeah, but it also yeah. included... It included a bunch of other electronic right. records. Right, I know. So but it was a like, general like, why electronic we keep, like, records. beating our head on <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you would think a parent could just ask their kid or look in their backpack. <laughs> um, but like I know my friends whose kids go to Kyrene 
they have it set up where you just go right online. She puts her daughter's name and oh, information in, and it pops it's up everything. Yeah. So I know there's ways to do it. Well, I mean, if but we they probably have, have the powerful. associated <laughs> um, associated uh, platforms that mm -hmm. will um, provide that information. Well, I think whatever time we put on the the first yeah. one we mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. should be the same time one. that and goes on. Yeah, that. yeah and that's probably why we pulled it. Setting expectation about initial response time from receiving the request to giving an acknowledgement and then how long to right. have it fulfilled. And it says the superintendent shall confirm the existence of a parent enrolled pupil relationship prior to complying with any request to access information Maybe that stated be herein. The principal? I don't think that all of those should have to go through I, I agree because I because what they're I think what they're saying there is basically you that know, the it, librarian shouldn't they may not know who that person yeah. is. Right. So yeah, the principal yeah. so maybe saying, they're confirming that this is who they say they are. Yeah. Well, maybe we should just say administration. Administration. To get that personal information yeah. about okay. the kid has to be verified. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's change that where it says the superintendent, mm -hmm. Krista, mm -hmm. to administration. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got it. All right. And Perfect. Then, and then once we get our time, time to thing. decide on the other right. thing, we'll finish that up. Okay. okay. Resource centers, media centers, school libraries, Oh, this is the exhibit. This is yeah. the exhibit where I don't want people coming in and destroying our library um, by pulling books out and not, yeah. So, like, someone could fill this yeah, out. Yeah, because it says as parents one. may access available books and materials mm -hmm. and may receive a list of books and materials. So when it says may access, that is like you can go into the library. Well, I would say may request available books and materials. We request yeah. do we yeah. have a list of everything. I mean, the librarian knows who checks books out. Yeah, we have a list of everything. So I think what they're saying is being able to come in and look mm -hmm. at the book. Yeah. What that is. Which I would say they can request. Request like you to said, review. Request to review. Yeah. I like yeah. this better. Because we yeah. should we should be providing that out to them. Like they right. submit the request and then we're and like, yeah, yeah, you basically are checking these books out right. and yeah. you can take them home yeah. or whatever. But right. like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I would say parents may request to review available books and materials and parents may receive a list of books and materials their children have borrowed from the school's library. Yeah. I just want to make sure that I don't want to limit parents' access to the physical items, but we can't disrupt a school day with parents coming into the library and yeah. pulling We're books out. We're not a public out. library. Yeah. So yeah. And what about just a every, number one? I'm seeking. How are yeah, I just see. for I'm seeking parents. access. Um, um, is so this just for parents, or can just any? This is parental. This is request. where the administration verifies. Okay, that yeah. they yeah. are. So we're yeah. not going to get again community yeah. members, yeah, no, the, the people who just may for, not yeah. be allowed in our schools, parents okay. or guardians. You want to have something on here, like where it says, "Please fill out the you know the below information," and at the end. Um, uh, uh, you will be notified when the materials are yep. ready. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For pickup. Yeah. Or just ready or for, for review. For okay. Review. And well, what if, if they lose them? Do they have to pay, have to pay for the them? Just it's not. Them well, in? if we check them out under the student's account, That's it'll true. go on the student's account, Thank and then yeah. 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 Um. So, Christopher, for number one, because they're supposed to basically circle, right? I'm seeking access since we're changing the above section where it says parents may access to parents may request to review. Mm -hmm. Then it should say I am requesting to review the school library, school's library collection. Okay. Okay. You want to put a little footnote at the bottom? Any lost or damaged books will be charged to You might as parents. well. Yes. Just, like put it out in front. Uh -huh. No surprises. <laughs> you, were you, were, you were told. <laughs> okay, JLCB immunizations of students. This is the one that drives me nuts. And not, weren't we just gonna like make just say these are required and these are not? And right. Just be done it's with very it? confusing. Yeah. The way that too, it's written. It's very confusing. Um, it says, however, schools may not require. But well, we don't ask for that. Right. So, so the first it's JLCB is the actual um, policy yeah. and then so that's still in there yeah. but then yeah J, JLCBR like 
this is the one that drives me crazy when it's like, however, schools may not require immunization for COVID or any other variant of COVID unless the immunization is first prescribed by the rule adopted. Finally, schools may not require any resident of the state to receive COVID or any variant of COVID. Like, we just said you, you can't. take out the whole first section. <laughs> I think we should just take out the parental consent for COVID-19 yeah, or COVID-19 yeah. variant because it's just, we already said you can't. Yeah. Immunization is not required for right. school so attendance, A COVID. and B, done. Right. I almost feel like maybe they forgot to scratch that out because it's, yeah. Well, because so especially out they that scratched out question? everything underneath yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah. So I would just take out that whole Both parental questions. consent for COVID. Oh, got it. Because we're not. Because it's not needed. Because we're not requiring mm -hmm. you to have it, and mm -hmm. you're not allowed to require it. Right. It, that just seems ridiculous. It's like redundant. Yeah. I think that was maybe it in that particular one. Yeah. I think so. And that was the last one. I do oh yeah. I'm oh. scrolling. It's a long one. Right. But because yeah. it probably says ten more times. Yeah, that's, I actually thought it was duplicate, but it's not. Okay. Future action. If you have an item you'd like to see on a future board meeting agenda, please reach out to Krista. Upcoming meetings. We do have a meeting on Wednesday, November 9th. Um, we start off with an executive session at 5 p.m. That is just for board members. The business meeting will follow um, starting roughly at 6 p.m. And then Wednesday, December 14th, uh, we also have an executive session again at 5 p.m. The business meeting, which is open to the public, starts at 6 p.m. Both of those meetings are here in the FHUSD Learning Center. And with that, I move we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting adjourned. How timely. Wow. We are very timely. So over those policies. Well, the regulations.